End of chapter two. Dwayne Scrod Sr. informed Dr. Dressler that Dwayne Jr. wasn't on the soccer team, the football team, the lacrosse team, or any other team at the Truman School. He keeps to himself, Dwayne, Jr., Dwayne Sr. explained. Rod Solo, you might say. His granny bought him a cell phone, but I don't believe he's ever answered it. Dr. Dre Dressler felt a sickly wave of apprehension. He had a mental image of Dwayne Jr., lost in the woods and writhing in agony, his innards full of needle-sharp pencil splinters. This was followed by an equally unpleasant vision of Dr. Dressler himself being fired by the Truman Board of Trustees and then getting dragged into court by the Scrod family. Sometimes DJ doesn't come through the door until way late, Dwayne Sr. was saying. I don't bother to wait up. He's a sizable young man. Not many folks are dumb enough to mess with him. Dr. Dressler took out another business card and wrote his phone num home phone number on the back. Would you mind calling me as soon as you or Mrs. Scrod hear from your son? There's no Miss Scrod around here, said Dwayne Sr. at the moment. Oh, I'm sorry. What for? We get by just fine, don't we, Nadine? The macaw made a purring noise and nibbled the frayed collar of Dwayne Scrod Sr.'s hunting jacket. Dr. Dressler handed the card with his phone number to the man, who immediately gave it to the bird. Don't you worry about Junior, he said, letting the screen door bang shut. He'll show up when he shows up. Good night now. Dr. Dressler hustled down the driveway toward his car, which out of habit he had locked. While groping for his keys, he heard an animal scurrying through the scrub, and, his, and he felt his heartbeat quicken. The scent of pine needles made Dr. Dressler sneeze violently, and he was startled by a voice from inside the darkened house. Bless you, Nadine squawked. I don't know how to say that. Gesundheit, 